With millions of species on Earth, scientists estimate that we may have only described as few as 25% of them. Sometimes, when a new species is discovered, it's only seen that one time and then never seen again. In this video, we're looking at five species of plant and animal that have only ever been recorded once. This is part three of my series on species only known from their holotype. So if you like this video, make sure you check out the other two that I've already made. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you enjoy this kind of content, then please help me out by liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate your support. In South America, there are 11 known species of wild cat. Of those, eight are in the genus Leopardus, commonly known as the American spotted cats. These include the ocelot, the oncilla, the pampas cat, the cod cod, the margai, Jeffrey's cat, the Andean mountain cat, and the southern tigrina. The relationship between these different species is complex and many of them have several recognized subspecies, with new ones being proposed regularly. In 2001, in an effort to better understand the interconnectedness of the cats in this genus, Colombian researcher Manuel Ruiz Garcia and his team began to gather specimens of Leopardus cats from different museums in order to conduct genetic research. As Ruiz Garcia was checking out the cat specimens that the government of Colombia had in its collection, he stumbled on a skin of a cat that was labeled as an ocelot, but that didn't look quite right. Ruiz Garcia noticed that the rosettes were in oblique chains with fuzzy edges. The fur had a dark and deep orange color, almost bordering on red. And when compared with other Leoparda species, he noticed that the tail was shorter with distinct rings, that the top of the head and the dorsal crest were darker, the coat was denser and woollier, the head was rounder and wider, the face was flatter, and the body was shorter and more robust. The specimen was just a skin with fur, so none of the bones could be studied and the collection tag noted that it had been collected in 1989, above 3,100 meters on Galeras Volcano. Genetic research was done on the specimen, and in 2023, 22 years after the one and only specimen was pulled out of the museum collection, Ruiz Garcia described it as a new species, Leopardus narinensis. Commonly called the Red Tigrina, Nariño cat, or Galeras cat. Genetically, it's actually most closely related to Jeffrey's cat and the cod cod. But sadly, it's believed that the species is likely already extinct, and if not, it would be out there teetering on the verge of extinction. An abundance of camera traps have been operating in the area where the specimen was collected since 2018, and none have ever captured one of these cats on camera. In May 2016, researcher Rohan Pandit was in Arunachal Pradesh, northeastern India, where he was doing biodiversity surveys. This small corner of India is a biodiversity hotspot, and new species are being described in the region with regularity. On this particular day, Pandit was traveling with his local guide, Wang Chu Fiang. The pair were in a hurry to get somewhere as they traveled through a forest near the village of Ramda. As they traveled along, Fiang noticed a snake in some leaf litter on the ground. He called Pandit over, who knew right away that it was a species of viper. But the two didn't have time to study it, so Pandit made the decision to capture the snake and take a closer look at it later. Once they got back to their camp, Pandit examined the viper Fiang had found, and he was surprised by what he saw. 
It had a peculiar snout that made it look similar to the hump-nosed viper of peninsular India and the Western Ghats. So at first, Fiang thought that perhaps the species had expanded its range. But the snake had other unique features. While it was mostly brown on top, on its sides and its belly, it had a striking red color, which was unlike other vipers in the region. And it had reproductive organs that were totally unique among snakes found in the area. The snake's scales were counted, and the number of scales was totally different from any other known species of snake in northeastern India or in nearby China. Finally, genetic testing was done. And while its closest relative is the Tibetan pit viper, it was different enough both genetically and morphologically for the snake to be described as a new species. In 2019, it was officially described as Trimeresurus arunacalensis, and given the common name of Arunachal pit viper. Because the forest where the snake was found is almost completely unstudied, nothing else is known about the species, including its conservation status, prey, preferred habitat, or its behavior. The hope is that the discovery of additional specimens in the future will help us better understand the ecology of this amazing red viper from India. Bananas are a common fruit, but what many don't realize is that there are about 1,000 varieties of banana and 68 recognized species. The majority of the edible varieties are derived from only two wild species from South and Southeast Asia, Musa acuminata and Musa balbiciana. In the tropical northeastern corner of Australia, two native species of banana can be found. But the region used to have a third species of wild banana that has only ever been recorded once. In 1849, an Irish-born botanist named Eugene Fitzalan arrived in Australia. He had a passion for orchids, and his hope was to explore the tropical forests of Queensland in order to discover some new species. He teamed up with Ferdinand von Mueller, and together they described many new species of plant. On an expedition through the forests around Daintree's River, Fitzalan came across a banana plant that he didn't recognize. He collected several different parts of the plant, including the leaves and the fruit. In 1875, von Mueller examined the specimen and determined that it was new to science. He gave it the epithet Musa Fitzalanii in honor of Eugene Fitzalan who collected it. And today, it has the common name of Daintree's River Banana. But this was the one and only time that the species has ever been seen. Several expeditions for the plant failed to rediscover it, including a banana collecting expedition to the area in 1956. Because of this, the species is considered to have gone extinct. In 2019, a journal article detailing research on the 71 recently extinct species of plant in Australia found that nine of these extinct species are only known from the type specimen including Daintree's river banana. As a result, they concluded that these species should be considered taxonomically suspect, as not enough evidence of their existence exists to be studied today. Also, the age of the specimen, combined with the fact that only fragments of the plant were collected, make it even harder to know for sure that Daintree's river banana was in fact a unique species. In 1979, about 1,300 kilometers off the coast of Chile, a small shark was pulled up from the depths. It had a bulbous head and measured about 40 centimeters long. It was found at a depth of about 330 meters at the Nazca submarine ridge, and it wasn't just unique for its strange shape. The shark had photophores for bioluminescence, as well as a pocket next to each of its front fins. While the purpose of these pockets isn't fully understood, 
it's believed that they contain a bioluminescent fluid that the shark uses for hunting, communication, or for mating displays. Similar to the taillight shark found off the coasts of Argentina and South Africa. The species was named the pocket shark, and it was the only species in its genus. The deep sea is infamously understudied, and no other specimen of the pocket shark has ever been found. But researchers thought that the species probably stretched across the depths of the Pacific Ocean. Then, in 2010, a strange discovery on the other side of the continent, in the Gulf of Mexico, led to some confusion. A team of researchers from Tulane University were studying sperm whales in the Gulf when they captured a tiny pocket shark that only measured 15 centimeters long and also happened to look like a mini sperm whale. It was believed that this was the same species of pocket shark that had been found off the coast of Chile, and researchers were surprised that the shark's range managed to stretch to the other side of the continent. But upon closer examination, researchers found that the specimen collected off of Chile and the specimen from the coast of Louisiana had different numbers of vertebrae and photophores. As a result, the new specimen was described as a separate species and called the American pocket shark. To date, no other specimen of either species has ever been recorded, and nothing is known about their ecology, their range, or their conservation status. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, check out the other two videos I made about species that have only ever been recorded once. I also need to say a special thanks to my patrons. Without their ongoing support, I wouldn't be able to make a video like this every week. If you want to help support the channel, check us out on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.